Joe. Have you voted yet? I have not. I'll probably go by uh, around lunchtime, and I'll probably be like number 30 or 40. <laughs> I don't see much action today, Joe. Well, it's, yeah, especially here in Massachusetts, I think. Um, Correct. Although, according to the uh, city clerk's office, let me see here, to the exact numbers, uh, 8,158 voters requested mail-in ballots. Yep. And 550 vote, voted early last week. So. Yeah, I, I think what the previous elections have shown, though, is those mail-in ballots go to people that normally vote. Just mm-hmm. makes it easier for them. Yeah, I don't think it's having an effect on increasing turnout like so many thought it would. Yeah, uh, I don't think it's going away anytime soon, though. No, it's, I mean I'm not suggesting that. I just I never believed that it was going to increase turnout. Just making it easier for those people that vote. Yeah, and, you know I'm not going to argue that, but <laughs> uh, it's certainly not not what they thought it would do for turnout. Right. Uh, all 31 precincts are open today, though, here in Quincy. Certainly, uh, polls close tonight at 8. I saw the city workers out quarter of 5 this morning putting out the handicapped parking signs out in front of the library here. So, uh, so Yeah, Nikki Crispo, Joe Newt, they do a great great job, yep. and the various departments help them. Uh, certainly the police are a big part of that today. and I hope they all bring a book to the voting places for themselves, because it's going to be a long day. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, they are dedicated, though, those volunteers. Uh, they, they do a great job, for sure. They do. They take a lot of pride in it, and it's uh, to some extent it is a, a version of public service, you know. Yep. So uh, we appreciate that very, very much. Absolutely. Uh, Mayor, can we uh, talk a little bit about the uh, issue of the Long Island Bridge project? I understand there's a bit of an update to tell folks about. <clears throat> well, there's an issue with, um, as, as most folks probably know, when you go out to Squanum, you then go out to the uh, Moon Island Causeway to get to Moon Island, which then would have led to Long Island when the bridge was there. And um, the city of Boston applied for permits to do work on Moon Island, uh, emergency order. Now, they the road's been coming apart for years, so they applied for emergency order rather than going through the regular process, which the con con denied. They then went to the state DEP, and DEP granted them the 24-hour um, request. But what happened was um, those conditions that the DEP put in, uh, they just completely ignored. So the Conservation Commission of the city uh, called DEP and said, look, then there's no erosion control. Uh, all those things that they're supposed to do under the permit, they weren't doing, which is so typical of the city of Boston. Um, you know, if you can't, what's, what's the old scripture saying? If you can't trust somebody in little things, how do you trust them in big things? I mean, this is a repair to a road and it's all messed up. Yeah, to them trying to handle a bridge. Um, so it's, uh, the DEP shut them down and um, told them they wanted a full plan and basically get their act together. I mean, you're dealing with the causeway, right, this, this part of the causeway is falling into the ocean. Um, there's strict requirements because you've got you've got equipment and, and um, you know, if, if something springs a leak, a hydraulic leak, gas, oil, whatever, it would go right into the oceans. So that's why they have all these stringent conditions when they, um, you know, when they issue these permits. So the contractor Boston just ignored it. So DEP's uh, come down pretty hard on them, and uh, I don't know if they have yet been given approval to go back and fix the road. Um, so we'll see what happens. But uh, it, it, we had raised this issue. It's interesting. Uh, Solicitor Timmons had raised it with the judges many uh, years ago about, hey, this isn't a, just a bridge issue. There's issues that lead up to the bridge, and just the judge threw it out. And here we are. They've got to deal with it now in an emergency situation because they're not capable of maintaining things. Hmm. So would, does this need to be resolved regardless of what happens with the bridge project? It's a separate issue, absolutely. Um, they've, got to, um, they've got to follow the stringent conditions that were set forth by the Department of Environmental Protection when they issued the uh, original permit. Okay. So where do the uh, lawsuits stand with regard, regards to the bridge reconstruction? Oh, there's, there's still issues at DEP. Uh, as you know, we had... We had kind of won that other round uh, with, when it was adjudicated at DEP. Um, so uh, this this could go on for a long time, Joe. Hmm. Okay, I know it's. And uh, I, quite frankly, I've seen the reports coming out of Boston. I, quite frankly, I don't know how they're going to afford it if they got the permits down the road. Well, it's yeah, upwards in the multi multi hundreds of millions of dollar range now, I believe. Uh, yeah, on the bridge, and then hundreds of million dollars of whatever they were going to do on the on the island. You yeah. know. So. Uh, stay tuned. It sounds like. Indeed. Yeah. 
Uh, Mayor, can we talk a bit about uh, a project that is happening here in Quincy, the new public safety complex, a uh, major milestone last week? Yes, a great tradition. Uh, the Ironwork is Local 7. They do a top-off ceremony, or topping-off ceremony, I should say, which includes a, a little... Uh, a pine tree, a Christmas tree, and a flag, of course, and it's just been a tradition for decades with the eye workers. So uh, what they do is ahead of time, they, they paint the beam, and then all those people that work in public safety were asked if they want to sign the beam, uh, you know, start of the day before the topping off, and then the topping off ceremony uh, that following day. Uh, a lot of people were there, particularly the team uh, that's, that's building the building, and uh it's a nice. It's, it really is a nice little program, but also uh, it's been talked about for a long time. But now with the steel up, you get a real sense of the size of the building, the shape of the building, and uh, it's very exciting. It really is for everybody involved. This was talked about for a long time. Uh, it has a ways to go, but it's it's real now. You know, it's uh, it's coming down to the gr- out of the ground, and and now we see the shape of the building. And you know, we've got uh, we've got a great team on this. And of course, Suffolk Construction is the general contractor. And uh, we've got a number of great subs and a number of consultants involved in this to make sure we get it right. Is it uh, on schedule? Well, we fell behind schedule because yeah. of the Father Bill's delays and then the asbestos delays in the ground that was found. But we're catching some of that up. So okay. it's still uh, looking like September, October of 2025. Okay. Uh, and at which time the old station comes down? That's correct. I know that's going to be a sad day for a lot of people, but yes, it will It will be coming down. I'm sure I'll be hearing from some of these uh, regular letter writers how important it is to protect and keep that old building. <laughs> uh, but I'll be, I'll be uh, hopefully the first one with a sledgehammer on the old one. <laughs> uh, is it on budget is a, is a question, too. It is now. I mean, yeah. originally when we were bidding this out, and that was a crazy time during the supply chain issues and all, yeah delays and so forth, the, the, the prices did go up. It just was the marketplace. Uh, and I know a lot of municipalities in private jobs have been dealing with that. But things have settled down. There's, there's far more um, consistency now and it, the, the ups and down swings in the construction market. Now, the interest rates have gone up a little bit mm-hmm. for the private development, but there's, a, there's kind of a a uh, better sense that there's continuity now. There's not all these crazy issues going on. So I know they know that, you know, switching gear and things like that, they've got to order right out of the box because it takes 18 months to get it. But for the most part, um, you know, I think people have figured it out now. This coming uh, Saturday, Mayor, the city will be recognizing Women's History Month by honoring five local women. The Remember the Ladies presentation and a tea happening uh, yes. at High School Auditorium. Uh, from 2 to 5 on Saturday. On Saturday, that's correct. Yeah. Uh, Quincy High School, and we've uh, we've chosen some some women who came recommended to us in different categories, and I know we've got uh, public service. I think Barbara Solar, uh, business, I think, is Karen Smith, education, uh, um, Courtney is, Mitchell, yep. who's the principal over at uh, Southwest, um, Help me out here, Joe. Sure, we have uh, Doris Cox. Doris Cox yeah. for yes, nonprofit. She does a great job at Bay State Community, and uh, the fifth was Linda Santoro. Linda Santoro, Quincy Art Association, for her work in the arts. Five outstanding ladies and citizens of the city. So we're we're thrilled to recognize them. This is free, uh, to open to the public. That's correct. I do think they asked for reservations because of the planning for the tea. Sure. Very nice, and uh, you'll be making comments, I'm sure, with regards to Abigail Adams' life and legacy. Well, we um, I generally say hello, mm-hmm. welcome people, but I sit in the audience. This is their day, and uh, we look forward to, to greeting them. Very nice. And then on Sunday, there's an event you might be aware of, I'm sure, the First Lady of uh, the Republic of Sierra Leone is coming to the United First Parish Church. I did hear that, yes. indeed, yes. Park Service involved in that as well to talk about the uh, connection between that city and Quincy through the Amistad case, which is That's right. really interesting. Yeah, The Menden Bible that was given to, to the Adamses, which is still at the at the uh, Peace Field. So good yes. stuff. Yeah, very nice. Mayor, anything else going on we should let folks know about right now? Um, I don't know. Good luck with the weather, everybody. <laughs> um, <laughs> it is what it is. March is always dismal, so let's, let's hope for some sun at some point. 
anytime you get wind off the water in spring, this is what you get here in New England. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. Oh, we can't complain. It hasn't been too bad a winter, so... I'm not going to complain. No, uh, and I'm not. I'm not cashing in my chips just yet. It's not over just yet. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for your time, Mayor. Uh, thank you. Have a great day. You too.